Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's a real buzzword in the hobby, isn't it? Reprints. And that's what we're going to have a chat about today. We're going to do, I suppose, a little bit of delving into what it means uh, from a stock perspective and a retail perspective and a wholesale perspective. And then also, you know, what's to come and what impact does it have on us as both collectors and investors? Hey, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And if you want to become a channel member, that'd be greatly appreciated. You can join up from the home screen. It's nice and easy. And uh, you can ask me any investing related questions via email when you are joined up as a member. We have some awesome chats on there of members. So uh, yeah, join up if you'd like. Anyway, onto the topic at hand, reprints. So I suppose first cab off the rank is, you know, what's coming, what's officially announced. <laughs> and before we even delve into that, though, I just want to make one premise. And that is that every place is different. Okay, so whether you're in United States, Europe, Australia, everywhere is different, okay? Everywhere has different markets. For example, in Australia, we never really got a Brilliant Stars reprint. And as a result, you know, Brilliant Stars went from, you know, it wasn't even cheap at launch. Like it went from probably 180, 190 Australian dollars, which is probably like 115, 120 US, straight up to like 250 to 300 really, really quickly. And it hasn't really budged from there ever since. In fact, it's probably a touch dearer than that now. I haven't checked Brilliant Stars prices for a little while in terms of booster box. Whereas the US, for argument's sake, you know, you could still buy that off Pokemon Center for quite some time. And just recently, that and Lost Origin had a slight restock as well. So uh, another argument or another example of that is, you know, Fusion Strike, where prices went so north so quickly in the United States, it is still in stock in uh, the UK's Pokemon Center. And it was also quite readily available in Australia for a long period of time and prices down here didn't reflect the prices that were in the US. So what I'm getting at is every market is a little bit different. Now on what's being reprinted, okay, I'm pretty sure uh, the, the Europe, UK, etc., have, you know, a 151, English 151, that is sort of official announcement that that's coming back into stock, mostly I think in booster bundles. And I think even the United States has just recently had an announcement from a distributor level that you can bundle in 151 booster bundles, bundle in booster bundles <laughs> into a little package, but it means you're probably going to have to pick up some other products, maybe some, you know, less desirable products that you know, distributors or the Pokemon Company National that pass on distributors are really struggling to move. Maybe, you know, some elite trainer boxes that are tough to move or some other booster boxes that are tough to move. But there is more 151 booster bundles coming in the United States. Now, <clears throat> I suppose on that whole premise that A, everywhere is different and B, the only real announcement that we've had is this small 151 reprint. The real big overarching question is what else is coming? We're getting pretty deep into Scarlet and Violet. And realistically, the only reprint we've seen so far is Scarlet and Violet base set in, you know, booster box and elite trainer box form. So what is coming? We've had Powder Evolve, we've had Obsidian Flames, we've had, you know, 151, we've had Paradox Rift, we've had Temporal Forces, we've had Twilight Masquerade, now we're into Shrouded Fable, we've had um, uh, Powder Fates. Like, we're, we're getting pretty deep into Scarlet and Violet territory without seeing some major booster box restocks yet. So it's a very, very big question. What's coming? We should find out soon enough. Generally, the holiday season in the United States is when we'll see big booster box reprints. I would be extremely, extremely surprised if we don't see some. That's my first opinion. And again, it's just an opinion. I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> I'm not part of the board of the Pokemon Company International, but I would be extremely surprised if we don't see some booster box reprints. Now on that, I would also be extremely surprised if one or two or some of those sets never get a reprint. Like I can see that happening. I can see some Scarlet and Violet sets just not getting reprinted. And here's, I suppose, the reasoning why. We all know there's, there's so many external factors that affect every business and the fact of the matter is the Pokemon Company International slash the trading card game is a massive business. And I think you would have your head buried in the sand if you don't think, you know, their analysts, their marketers just don't keep a massive, massive eye on the hobby because they do. You can't perform so successfully for so long without really, really knowing the market. They must know it so well. They must know their consumer base so well. They must know how to print to the levels so well. They probably even keep 
maybe they don't care about that much and maybe they care about it more than we think but they probably also keep an eye on the secondary market so what happens to booster boxes three years down the track five years down the track and what impact does the amount of supply they put out to the market have on that like i'm sure they would probably look at that so <clears throat> with all that in mind that they keep you know a massive eye probably on the marketing and distribution of this whole thing this is probably the reason why i think that we will not see some reprints of certain sets the economies you know for the most part no matter where you work i'm sure look some industries are probably still booming but a lot have slowed down. I work essentially in retail sales. All I do is sell new Toyotas. Not that flash. It's a fun job. I enjoy it. I love cars. I love talking to people. But all I do is sell Toyotas. Much like a lot of retail stores, all they do is sell cards. At a distribution level, all the distributors do is sell bulk cards to the smaller stores and online stores so they can sell cards to, con cards to consumers. That's how the chain works. Now, if things are slowing down, and we see it as well, right? We see it in the car world. It, it's much the same. It's just, of course, a different industry. But, you know, we need stock to pass on to consumers that want to buy cars, whether that's retail customers or fleet customers. And if we are overstocked of something and there's not enough demand for it, well, that just sucks because either A, we get caught with it, or we tell our distributors or wholesalers, the ones that pass on the cars to us, that we don't want any more of that stock because we can't sell it. Now, look, the same thing happens in the Pokemon card world. Like, if you're sitting on a product, like you have still 50 or 100 Elite Trainer boxes of Scarlet and Violet base in stock, and it's not the new kit on the block anymore, it's been eclipsed by, you know, Powder and Fates Elite Trainer boxes, 151 Elite Trainer boxes, you're not going to go back to your distributor and say, give me more of these. And the distributor is not going to go to Pokemon Company National and say, give me more of these because I need to pass them on to the stores because there's too much stock. So keep that in mind that someone is keeping an extremely close eye on this, that everything flows smoothly. Now, that's a hard beast to control because who knows exactly what the demand for a set's going to be. I mean, I can imagine you could argue when we release something or when Pokemon releases something like 151, there's going to be heaps of demand for it. So it would not, it would, it would not make sense for that not to get reprinted. Okay, we've seen the booster bundles, but in my opinion, it would not make sense to not reprint and restock Elite trainer boxes are 151. Like I just, I can't see that not happening. I can see the UPCs not being reprinted because generally, you know, they're sort of one a year and we've got the Terrapagos and the GameStop exclusive Greninja, which I've said don't invest in the Greninja one. But, you know, they're coming this year. So why would we, why would they release uh, new, more 151 UPCs that would just overshadow those other UPCs? Because everyone loves 151. It wouldn't make any marketing sense because how are you going to sell your new product if everyone just wants to absorb your old one? And my point is, you know, it would just be silly for them to not print something more that has heaps and heaps of demand. Like look at Japanese 151. That took everyone by a little bit of a surprise, how, just how much supply in that, you know, second and almost third wave that we saw of Japanese 151 boxes. Why? Because it's so damn popular and they knew it would get absorbed and sold. At the end of the day, they're a company and they want to make profit and they want to make money. You know, there's board members invested in this company that want to make a return on their money. They don't look at it and go, oh, you know what we're going to do? Let's reprint more Scarlet and Violet base. Yep. Yeah, let's do a third massive reprint of Scarlet and Violet Base because you know what? That's selling like hotcakes. It's just not. It makes no sense. Okay, Powder Evolve sort of makes sense, doesn't it, to do a reprint of booster boxes because they will sell. They will sell. But having said that, you know, how big is that reprint going to be? And if it is small, medium or large, what impact will that have on the market? Like from a distributor level, they can also choose what price they pass on to the stores and the stores can also choose what price they pass on to the consumers. We might only see a very small, for argument's sake, reprint of Powder Evolve booster boxes and it might not even impact the price at all. Like in Australia, you can pick them up for about 175, 180 Australian dollars, which is 125 US-ish. And if this small reprint comes and there's still a lot of demand for it because it's a solid set, and from a distributor to store level, prices don't really get cut. Maybe we see them at like one sixty nine ninety five. It's not going to really matter, is it? And it's going to rebound extremely, extremely quickly. Demand for a good set, and that's probably the telltale telltale sign. Because I feel like I'm rambling a tiny bit, but I get uh, I get caught up very quickly talking about Pokemon cards, particularly when it comes to anything to do with the investing side of it and reprinting and the distribution level. But 
Um, you know, one thing you'll find, which is a really good telltale sign of how well a set will perform, is just how quickly it rebounds after a small restock or resupply or reprint. Like, look at Lost Origin. That recently got a small restock, but all of a sudden, you know, prices that were at like 220 a box went down to 180, straight back up to 220 because it's such a good set. That's how it works, <laughs> doesn't it? Anyway, I don't know. Have we, uh, have we talked long enough about reprints? I suppose the, the one last I suppose premise about reprints that I want to touch on and how you know the Pokemon Company International would really, really be looking at this is I suppose another question, you know, will they, have they, can they learn from their mistakes? And look, there hasn't been many. We we can't bag out the Pokemon Company. The the trading card game is is too successful almost. Like it's so good. It's surely the biggest in the world. But there are almost a few overstocking mistakes they've made, it seems. Like, you can still find Darkness Ablaze, Vivid Voltage, and Shining Fates absolutely anywhere for a very reasonable price. Arguably, for most cases, still at or below retail. And those sets are like pushing three slash four years old. Is that a mistake? Does the Pokemon Company International care? Did they print way too much because it was COVID times and they just weren't sure exactly how the market would absorb it? and they saw heaps and heaps of demand, so they just went, here's product, here's product, here's product. Will they learn from that? How far in advance do they future plan these things? Will they go, hold on, like, you know, we printed way too much early Sword and Shield sets, except, of course, Rebel Clash and Sword and, Sh uh, Sword and Shield Base, that they won't or they don't want to make that same mistake with Scarlet and Violet, as in, will we see Obsidian, Paldea, Temporal, Paradox, get very small resupplies or, you know, next to no reprints at all, it could well happen. And there's where my money sits, okay? These sets, some of these sets, make no mistake, will get reprinted because they're in demand. But I wouldn't be surprised if one, two, three or four of them miss out on reprints. And how do we know? How do we know Obsidian Flames, which is clearly the worst set so far from Scarlet and Violet, is not going to be the one that doesn't get reprinted at all and therefore it does a rebel clash and booster box prices go to 200 US dollars really quickly because supply is low. Yeah, it's not a good set, but supply is low. Everything else has been reprinted around it except it. You just never know, do you? So that's why a lot of people love the spray and pray approach, which is, you know, let's just buy a couple of cases of every single booster box set that comes out. And here's, I suppose, where the investing advice comes in at the end of it. Um, but, 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 it all depends how long you're planning on hold. If you're planning on like a 24-month flip, you know, that would work because if a set doesn't get reprinted, you can go, okay, great. You know, my Obsidian Flames boxes that I averaged out at 90 US dollars a box because I bought two cases of them and never got reprinted, I've sold at $200 US a box in 24 months' time. Similar to what Rebel Clash did in Sword and Shield. But if your plan is to have diamond hands and hold for the really long term, we know what's, or we can see what's happened to Rebel Clash. It has just stagnated for like the last two years. Why? Because it's not a good set. There's no real chase cards inside it. So yes, you might use the spray and pray approach of buying, you know, one to two cases of every single booster box set that comes out. But you might also use, in my opinion, the better, <laughs> the better example or better investment strategy, which is going, you know what? Let's go quality over guesswork or quantity. Let's go quality. What is a really, really solid Pokemon card set? What has lots and lots of demand for it? What has really, really good depth of chase cards? What has an absolute banger chase card as a top hit? And you know what? It doesn't matter because I'm holding five or 10 years and people are going to look back for the best sets in five or 10 years. You know, they're going to go Umbreon chasing. They're going to go Giratina chasing. They're going to go, depending on how well it holds its value, Greninja chasing from Twilight Masquerade. And they're the things that people think about when it comes to five or 10 years down the track. They don't think about going uh, Marnie chasing from Sword and Shield base set. They don't think about going Boss's Orders chasing, which is a $30 card from Rebel Clash. They don't think about that. That has some intrinsic or extrinsic value because it's just a little bit of a rare sealed product by itself as a collectible. You've got to think bigger picture when it comes to investing it. That's why I always park my money into the really, really solid sets because then the whole reprinting thing doesn't really matter. If it's printed to demand, which it should be, and I think they would have learnt their lesson from Sword and Shield era, particularly of overprinting some of the sets, then it shouldn't really matter. If you've got diamond hands and holding for a long period of time, five to 10 years, you'll be perfectly fine. I'm Michael, this is Pokey Oz, and I'll catch everyone next time.